Welcome to today's Sedokan Saturday, or not, because again, we're doing a Kempo technique. Pretty much the only Kempo that I really add to our Sedokan curriculum are the Kempo Yakusokus. Everything else is, is pretty much straight up Sedokan. I extrapolate some of the concepts of movement into applying the Kata uh, Bunkai, applying the, the Bunkai of Kata, or applying the follow-ups to our Sedokan 11, a lot of the follow-ups, bunkai applications, sparring, fighting, self-defense concepts are derived from those Kempo Yakusoku, but the core is still Sedokan. So in case anybody's confused about that, when I say Sedokan Saturday, but not so much. So today is Kempo 18, Yakusoku number 18. Again, the Kempo systems, as they've broken off, they, call them, they originally were called combination. Combination 6, combination 7, combination 3, etc. Then there was a copyright issue over somebody who wrote a manual for us and he broke away from the organization and we had to rewrite the manual, but we couldn't use combination because it was such a prevalent thing that it has that 60, 75% has to change. Copyright law issue became a thing. So they changed the name to defensive maneuvers, which now they've shortened to DMs, whatever. They're prearranged, preset, punch defense techniques, Kempo Yakusoku. So, um, for further information on that, you can read up on the history of William Chow, Fred Valari, Nick Serio, George Pisade, and all of the combinations being formed in Kempo. So Kempo 18, again, Kempo means fist loss, so it's a punch attack. As the punch comes in, I'm going to seed ground just enough to get out of the way. Okay, the cat stance allows us to sort of absorb space, if you will. If I stay here, I can either move way back, now I'm out of range, or I can just sort of sit a little bit and that sucks the attack in. Most people have a tendency to overreach anyway, and this will sort of take advantage of that tendency. So I seed a little bit of ground in my cat stance, then I do a downward and out parry. Okay, a parry is a soft guiding. I'm not trying to smack it away, I'm just trying to guide it past me like changing the railroad tracks, right? Just a little deep of the lever and the train goes a whole new way. So I step back, parry. This parrying motion is very much like in Western fencing where we have our blocks. It's that down and out block with the sword concept, only it's done with my left hand. From here, I step into the opponent using my torso, hips, waist, elbow, shoulder, smack him, backhand, right across this nerve plexus in the jaw, side of the neck, ear, smack. Immediately grab. To grab effectively, put your hand flat on your opponent and make a fist. You'll probably get a little skin, so when you're practicing with a partner, be careful. Just get the uniform, the gi. You can also hook the back of the neck like your dad used to do when he wanted you to straighten up and fly right. So I smack, grab, pull in and down as I pivot back 180 degrees. As they're coming downward, I drop my elbow into the spine. If I'm super accurate, it's going to be right between the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, right at the plexus where the solar plexus attaches posteriorly on the inside of the body. Boom. Pivot to a lunging stance. Cross hammer right into that same spot of the jaw we hit a minute ago. Cover step. Move away. Check if you still need to be aware of anything. That's Kempo 18. Holly, can I get you us? We'll do it a couple times this way, and then we'll swap spots. Let's go to the switch. So the punch comes. Hey, I seed hey! ground. Okay, so if I'd stayed here, I'm hit. I just seed some ground, which kind of draws. Downward parry. I'm not smacking. It's just a soft little move to the side. Step in. Whack. Fist right hand flat on her shoulder, and I'd make a fist, but rather than grabbing her skin, I'm just going to softly get the gi. Pull down with the elbow. There's a tendency sometimes when you do this for people to want to twist as you pull them, okay? So I'm going to drop my elbow and step back, and that will help resist her twisting. Drop my elbow, pivot, and from here I still have a hold. As I hit, I release, whack with the hammer, side step cover, okay? Let's go to the other side. Thing again, let's go back just a little bit. Hey. Hey. One, two, three, four, five, cover step. 
And there you have, thank you Holly. Mm -hmm. There you have Kempo Yakusoku number 18. It's really great if my back's to a wall and their head goes that way. That's sometimes fun. The cover step, sometimes they've landed on their hand here. And as I cover step, and kick the hand out. So there are other little incidental fun things that can occur if you're doing your movements right and putting their body in the position that you want them in, not letting them just go wherever they want. Once somebody attacks you, you're in charge. They've given up any right of way, any, any options that they have. The minute they attack, that's out there. From there on, everything else, you get to control the situation. And that's what the Kempos are designed to teach. Thanks again for joining. Hopefully that's helpful. Kempo Yakusoku 18 for our Sadokan, but not quite, Saturday. Please like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Ring the bell, give it to your friends. Practice it at home, and until next week, as always, keep practicing. I like the new name. <laughs>